Uh, hello. <coughs> uh, my name is uh, Marie Ann Hart Baker, but I'm going through a name change, so I've been uh, kind of just tagging myself, AKA. <laughs> 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 Sounds sort of hip hop, so it feels <laughs> kind of cool. <laughs> Anyways, I also want to introduce myself as not being brown. And the reason for that is I think in Ojibwe, uh, people were really referred to by color. So when I was looking at all the different words that I thought meant white people, it actually doesn't refer to their color or their skin at all. So I don't really like that concept of having to run around like, do you have enough makeup on? <laughs> Am I tanned enough? I don't like that. And I'm not from Big Sask, I'm from Little Sask. I think there was somebody that just did not say Little Sask, and I was worried you know, that people would think I'm from Big Sask. I did live in Big Sask, but I, my uh, relatives are from Little Sask. And I'm also not Aboriginal. Some people love that term, I don't. And uh, I don't believe there was ever a Native American Renaissance, although a lot of people talk about that. For me, uh, we're not close. <laughs> and then again, um, I noticed a little miss on this one person who I was forced to read as a kid. And I don't know if other kids are forced to read her, but it was Pauline Johnson. And that was my first uh, real knowledge of someone who was um, trying to write about uh, the environment, who was uh, trying to write about settlers and um, that kind of thing. And uh, actually, uh, why well, even think highly of her, even though a lot of people don't like her work, uh, is because she did uh, come through Winnipeg. And I think she was really inspired by what she saw of the Western uh, Indigenous women. So uh, I always feel like she kind of knew uh, something about us and wrote about us. Um, I think I would also like to say I'm not too interested in just books or writing. Um, I think there's another uh, term I'm more interested in. It's called text. It has to do with I'm kind of leading towards a cultural studies approach. And, and also this has to do with having taken a, my, a course on Mayan writing or I took an archaeology course where I studied that. And I, what I liked there was the concept of, um, you know, the togetherness of art and writing. And that uh, right now in cultural studies, you can have text that is not a book or is not writing. <coughs> and I kind of like that because I was always into sewing. So, you know, when you look at Native women's uh, clothing, I mean, there you have a text. And <coughs> in some cases, people can even read that text. They even know um, what are the stories there that are in a person's uh, clothing. <coughs> I, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, got dried out on the plane, but this is kind of where I wrote this stuff, so it's way up in the air, let's say. <laughs> 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 I'm not going to lie to you. I uh, felt I wasn't going to say much anyway, because I just felt that uh, there was this whole um, idea that, uh, you know, our writing and that should be limited, again, just to know, books or something like that. But uh, what are special difficulties are that I feel is that we are in an extreme high level of government corruption. Like in my case, my, uh, my res, uh, I think it's been four years and they're now $1.2 million in debt and whatever it means that I can't get any educational subsidy or, or that mostly because my family is in on uh, corruption. And uh, I feel badly about that, but uh, what can I say? It's, uh, there's so much there that has to be changed uh, in the communities. And also, um, I'm just recently doing stuff in disabilities, so I find that there's an incredible major epidemic of diabetes, and which will mean a great loss of our storytellers and uh, the availability of um, also cultural healers. Um, it happens very fast. I did a lot of interviews recently, and uh, people are taken out of their communities in Manitoba, separated from their families, and 
have to end up in living in a extremely horrific city called Winnipeg. <laughs> Even me, I'm trying to speak from there. <laughs> so I think that, um, well, back to the text idea. So we still have too many um, museums that are collecting native texts. Those are our texts. Uh, they don't need to be gawked at by non-natives. Some of those um, texts are, are very precious to people, and especially families. I remember hearing about this big old famous Alberta writer who um, was sticking his old paws into a, a very famous bundle. And he did it because, oh, I'm writing a book. You know, I thought, but you're abusing another group of people. So I don't want to get into his name, but I, I have fun um, kind of getting after him at times when I see him. Anyways, there's such um, danger of people, you know, getting sick in our community because of uh, the poor nutrition and all that that is going on. I went up north. I was at Brochet, the home of a very famous other Native writer, and uh, had the chance to, offer, to ask the little kids there, have you ever heard of Wasika Jack, Nana Bush? Of course they hadn't. Um, so just show you how interesting it is. On a worldwide stage, I'm saying, oh, this great writer is going around talking about, you know, Wasika Jack and all this, but in his home community, you know, the poor little kids don't even uh, know about that. And then again, when you think about it, they run out of school supplies. So I'm going to be on the phone and say, hey, why don't you send some money up north, you know, to your community? I don't think I'll get anywhere, but I'm just going to ask anyway, just to be a, a a kind of like a granny patrol, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what I think what is special is we need translation of our works into our languages and also the teaching of our languages. Um, this should have been part of the residential school compensation and obviously somebody left that out. I think, uh, actually the most, 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 most <laughs> important thing is in our literature and in our art, we don't have enough humor. We really don't. It's almost like um, a desert <laughs> compared to what really like you know what it's like to really talk with other Native people and how we view things. This isn't coming through in terms of um, you know the kind of um, videos, the TV drama, all that. So I, I want to say that's one of the things that we still have to work hard to get into our work. The level of abuse in our communities is so high, like in northern Manitoba, if you're trying to do anything cultural in the community, you're called a witch. So when is the burning going to take place, you know? <laughs> Help, you know? So there's much work that has to be done there just for the acceptance of our, our own uh, visions and insights about what our ancestors were like, because we have a group of Native people who do not want that anymore. And I think we are going to have to do a bit of work convincing them that they need that for their health and for their spirit. I feel like that uh, this whole uh, problem with writing, because I'm doing another paper I'm working on, is not facing enough the, the real responsibility of writers and artists, and that is the protection of indigenous knowledge. I, I don't know if you've seen some of these attacks that's being made on that, where um, I think there's non-native writers going around saying, oh, Indians are just pretending they have a culture. You know, they, they don't even know what they're talking about. They're just Stone Age people. So we've got a new attack about that, and it, it is in academia. It's not just in the general public. So again, we have to, I guess, uh, deal with that. I'm in the process of writing a memoir, so I guess this is why my thoughts uh, are sort of uh, spanning, you know, the years in a way. I think that I would like to um, see a lot more Native people teaching literature. Uh, I find it sad that uh, the idea of, um, you know, literature does not include that it should be decolonized. So again, we have a lot of um, problems with the kind of literature that's being taught and I don't know, I think uh, I think we should sort of incorporate it into a kind of a world literature, not just Canadian literature, like all this 
like a little cousin of some Canadian writer or something. For the second one, <clears throat> which said, are, what is um, Canadian institutions, like what are they doing to preserve or develop indigenous culture? I had one word, not. So obviously there must be a, you know, must be a cynical view, right? However, for me, I haven't seen too much. I went up to Thompson uh, again recently, and they are trying to set up a house of stories there, where they will be able to, uh, you know, tell stories in their language, and then kind of want it out in the bush too, so they don't necessarily want to be right on campus. But um, I was quite surprised when I said to them, uh, you might have to watch out for the university. The university has been a bit of a predator these days. Uh, in fact, uh, a lot of Native Studies uh, programs are going to be held in quite an examination at a conference I'm going to <coughs> in uh, Minnesota in May. They feel uh, they're like, uh, the old trick is first you say, oh Indians, come over here, we've got something for you to do. And then you put in Métis writers, right? Because they have the brown color. But then after that, you can conveniently substitute non-natives then to teach. So uh, that's been their pattern. So I was telling the elders there, maybe we should watch them this time. We've gone through the fur trade already, so why do we have to be treating our works of art and writing as if it's a piece of fur that we're handing into them and they're gonna give us money for it? <laughs> so I guess I would be considered already Time to go back to Manitoba, right? Okay, wait, well, sorry. I, I should have said more left. <laughs> I'm so glad to be here. <laughs> I'm glad to be on uh, your territory for a little while. Anyway, I am, uh, well, I'm just passing through, so what can I say, right? You don't have to worry about me. Um, but again, you know, the problem with appropriation is it's still going on. Only our own people are doing it. So that's still an interesting, uh, you know, way to look at it. And the uh, problem with that is they take up space uh, that could be, you know, uh, again, devoted to actual storytellers. I have no problem with our people being storytellers, and I don't think we've even got to the stories yet that need to be told. So again, I differ in that. I think there's some real uh, research that we must do to find, you know, the stories that will be helpful and healing to our people. I know little boys up in the northern part of Canada, I was saying to them, you know, hey, we don't have to, I don't have to teach a, a macho version of creation, and I had found a really cool story for them, and I also uh, was teaching the rolling head story from a different perspective that it had to do with gender imbalance. So again, you know, Little boys need that. They see all this violence in their homes. They want to know, how do I grow up to be a respectful man? And I think that uh, our stories can teach them that. So I guess uh, with literature, we don't have enough reviews being done by our people, not enough uh, critical work being done. And I guess in terms of uh, dissemination, I'd like to see more films and video because a lot of our people actually don't read books and they don't like them, but they love visual images. And so why do we have to be saying, oh, it's got to be in a book, or it's got to be a novel, or it's got to be this or that, when film and video can also really reach our people. In fact, one of the elders in Thompson said that he has trouble even storytelling because uh, some of the younger people don't have the visual images that they can relate to in the story. So he's thinking of, um, you know, being able to introduce that when he's storytelling. Again, this use of the truth and reconciliation uh, business that was supposed to happen, uh, that could have been useful for us if we could have infiltrated as writers. Had all this money in that and then I don't know what they're gonna do with it. Elijah Harper was speaking in Winnipeg and you know, he just, he belittled it as saying, it was just a gathering of stories because it didn't have a mandate to really uh, help the people who were gonna come out and say what happened to them. So I feel you know, kind of sad that uh, it's gonna be very hard for us to impact 
you know, and that kind of thing, which was supposed to redress the loss of our elders, the loss of our culture and traditions. So I found out this woman I was helping last year, um, she was kind of homeless, she was a writer. And then I found out she's living in a better place than I am now. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> so then, this is what I come up with my other thing is, we have to have housing for our writers. Because that's, you know, she's a writer and she's getting on with her writing now and she's got a really decent place to stay. So I thought, why not? Why not have something for artists and writers? Why does it always have to be like you have to have, you know, you know, it has to be laying on a street, you know, with your old sniff rag or something before anybody wants to help you? What about investing in some of our artists in that? And our, our people do have problems maintaining, um, you know, uh, safe housing and that. So I guess with uh, my problem again with the university is they have a low accountability and they seem to have a lack of cultural diversity when they're looking at teaching English. And uh, they certainly have uh, messed up on equal opportunity. You know, I mean, uh, I think I've been hearing about some well, across the board, North America, Native people are not getting tenure. They've got all the credentials, they're not getting tenure, and then there's ones that are not even moving along in their own department. So back to academia, even though it has its problems, I still think we need more scholarships uh, for our writers uh, and uh, more of these gigs they call writer in residence. Uh, but again, my favorite, uh, you know, because I'm into retribution, you know. And one of them is, I wouldn't mind anthropologists cleaning up their act a bit. Like, why must we come, you know, as if we're cleaning up some kitty litter, you know? <laughs> why, why is it our job? I mean, you know, they've got the degrees, they've got the money, even the retired ones, put them back in, on the job and correct some of the errors about our people. More. So, we, uh, well, actually, we do then need, you know, indigenous research where we are working in a cooperative way, I guess, with them. Um, although I keep thinking of myself as a dominatrix. Okay, <laughs> dig, dig. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I go places. <laughs> Anyways, I know in terms of what's happening, in terms of initiatives, that there is going to be an Ojibwe publication uh, coming out that is going to be fairly authoritative, authoritative which I'm happy about because we got some really uh, crazy ideas now floating in Manitoba <coughs> about our culture there. So I'm glad we're gonna have some, and it, the knowledge is coming from a language-based place. It's not just, oh, I just went to a sweat lodge the other day, you know. And it's gonna be from people who are studying with elders and that, that, that particular work's coming from. I guess I've always been sickened by the superstar syndromes that, um, you know, where academics, they'll make pets of native you know, authors or make pets of native artists and then they put them on some sort of pedestal, but it's all tokenization and it's all exotic, you know, exoticizing our people. And I don't think it works because, uh, I don't know, I've seen poor people that are, you know, filled with this, all this egotism and, uh, you know, it's very hard for them to be a normal person again and relate to the community. So again, with that, I would say, break up the apartheid system that's happening, either at the university in the English department or down on the, you know, the Ave or wherever, you know, the street is. Canadian society has got to dismantle this. It, what's, why think it's all happening in South Africa? It's, it's quite uh, happy here. I know it's in Winnipeg where I, I live. So in terms of uh, this collective action, that's part of it, is breaking up all those um, problems there. Among our people, I'd like to see us do more collaboration in writing. You know, the generations, cross generations working together. And hopefully, I'll get a chance to work with my granddaughters and we'll have a chance to do some video productions or theater. So I'm hoping that that will happen. And even my grandson, that he can get to star in something. So, um, we need more venues in Indian country, like not just uh, you know some obscure place that no natives ever go to, because they know they're not welcome there. You know, how about where we hang out? You know, have some of our writers and artists um, 
you know, being uh, celebrated there. So again, I would like to have a linkage among forms, like uh, why do people want to always separate things? Oh, this is a novel, oh, this is poetry, you know what I mean? I find that doesn't really work. I like just writing or just uh, <coughs> other kinds of ways to describe our work. But definitely the linking. And again, recognizing it has to do with storytelling, which comes from these communities. It doesn't totally come from your pillow, like when you're sleeping and you have a dream, you know. It's real, from real people, and it's our ancestors that are trying to reach us and tell us what do we got to do today to survive. So, again, you know, thinking that some people don't survive, like in case my mother didn't, I, um, I would like to have some honoring of our disappeared persons, uh, you know, the women uh, also that have been uh, murdered. I happen to meet the women from Juarez, Mexico. Very tiny women, but very big machete. <laughs> and boy, they teach me something, especially that yell they have. I mean, wow, you know, I'm going to take more lessons from them. And you know from the news, you, can, you just know what they're dealing with down there, that it's a war zone, and they've had to watch their children being, um, you know, murdered and mutilated right in front of them, and um, it's one of the saddest things, but they're on it. They're working together. The women are going up to the authorities and saying, where are, where is my relative? So back to Cop Watch, which was in Winnipeg that I took part in, and um, again, I think I'd like to, again, say I'm on my roll here, my wish list, I think I'd like to get more people out of prison, our people out of prison. I think some of them went there for maybe not too good reasons, so I think there's some kind of uh, thing that has to happen. And just some of them might be writers, some of them might be artists for all we know. So if we're going to, you know, find the great people, maybe some of them are in that group. And what is my biggest dream here? Uh, well, it's freeing the political prisoners, of course, you know who that is. Leonard Peltier, right? So, uh, not only the famous political <coughs> prisoners, but uh, other people, like even across the world, I would say, that, that are working to fight for their people and are being put in jail. But I guess, as I said, the big, big dream is, I, in order for our literature to get a big kick in the, I guess that would be in the, conclusion, <laughs> the end chapter or whatever. Uh, what happens there is that we need to read a reunification of our indigenous people across the Americas and also worldwide. That comes with protecting the resource and environment. So once we click into that and we see that writing is not just um, you know, scribbling in a book somewhere or something like that. Once we realize that, uh, it's, and it's not something we do to mutilate a tree, you know, like put it in a book, but that it's, <coughs> these stories are actually coming from an environment. It speaks to us, and that's why we need it, and that's why we have to connect that with the writing. So, Miigwech, thank you for inviting me, and I hope it didn't insult too many. Thank you. <laughs>